All right, I have a Miwa U9 here today. Um, I did go over a bunch of different formats, how to gut it, how to progressively pin it, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so I, I had, I figured I'd do this one because it's it's another format. Um, this one has something that we kind of refer to as having smooth wafers. I think it's an older version of the the U9. And after I pick it, we'll take a look inside. And I have another gutted U9 here, and we'll uh, compare some of the wafers because I'm I haven't looked at them side by side, and I would like to do that. All right, so tensioning, just a standard top keyway tensioner off one of the sides. If I need to, I have a second tensioner if I want to switch sides. Sometimes I like to do that so I can visually inspect um, wafers. Unfortunately, the lighting in front of my camera situation is it's not going to come into play unless I put on like a headset with lights on it and stuff. So uh, we'll go ahead and start. Just like any other lock, you're looking for um, pins that bind. Unfortunately, uh, the set pins in this that jiggle are jiggle extremely small um, but you can feel this uh, first wafer on the right uh, is not moving and I'll let off tension and just have like feather like tension when I go to set it and this is so I don't have to push too hard on the wafer um, risking an overset or jostling the tension like <clears throat> jostling a, a reverse tension causing other wafers to drop so there's that first one, and now it jiggles. The second one is already a little bit loose. Third one on the right, binding. So let's go ahead and got a little click out of that. Check that it didn't drop the second one. Okay. Um, and then we'll keep going back. I have one more back there, and it's uh, loose. So I got four wafers on the right side. Uh, I do know that they're in positions two, three, four, and I don't know, like seven or something like that. Uh, not too important. What's more important is feeling their pin, uh, their wafer states. Uh, this first one on the left is binding. It's lifting pretty high. All right. Uh, it lifted, and I felt a little bit of. I often feel a little bit of plug rotation. So, it, you 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 fall f deeper and deeper into not really a false set, but just more wafers being set, and you're going further and further towards being open, basically. Um, so I feel the second wafer on the left side. I think it's like wafer number five or something. Seems like it's binding, got a little click there. And that one has a lot of motion. So this one does have some mastering on it. And um, some of the mastering is a wide true gate. And we'll see that after. Uh, and it results in large jiggle when it's set. The one behind it's still loose. All right, so let's go look at this right side again. A lot of times I know that the second wafer on the right likes to drop. The first one here. I was moving a lot more than I expected it to. Normally I could see into this, but all right, that second wave on the right indeed did drop, so I just or no, I didn't drop. I hadn't said it yet, did I? Alright, so the second wave on the right is jiggling now. I just tested all three on the right, they're all jiggling. Let's check the front left one. You can also hear them. They say they make a noise when they're not uh, when well, they're not the binder. All right, so that that one behind the okay, the one behind the D, uh, the one behind the one with the wide gate. So the third one on the left, a little bit binder there. Um, let's check that. We'll check the second one on the right again. Still jiggling, and let's check that that the the last one on the right that I had. There it is. All right, it's binding. There we go, got a little click out of that. Um, going back to the left side, I think all the ones on the right are set unless they unless they drop and have to be reset. We should be able to be done with those. And it's likely I'll drop some of them, so nothing to worry about. All right, the next one I feel on the, the back left. Yeah, a little click out of it, but it's still binding more. So this is the, the fourth wafer I'm counting on the back left. I think it's like wafer eight. Right, a lot of jiggle out of it. Let's check check the state of our other wafers. All right, I think the front first one got a click out of it. It had um, it was feeling binding. That one's still jiggling. Uh, the second one on the left, third one on the left feels like it's binding. I think that's like a max lift or something. I got a little click out of it. 
check that one that I just said set the fourth one on the left. I hear stuff from it, so let's check some of the right stuff. That second one on the right often likes to drop. I discovered. No, still giving me jiggle noises. Third one on the right still jiggle noises. And then that fourth one on the right, I think it's a max lift. It's often hard to find where it's at. Yeah, I think it might be set already because I, I can't really find it. Um, first one on the left. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear kind of jiggle noises. I got a 3D printer going on in the background. It's messing with my hearing as well, so all kinds of stuff going against me here. All right. Second and third one feel jiggly. Fourth one on the left. Feels like it's binding. I had already clicked it once, but it's back to being the binder. So I'm gonna let off most of my tension and just kind of gently get into place. There we go. Big wiggle out of that. Last one on the left does not feel like it's binding yet. So let's go through. Second one on the left. Third one on the left. Fourth one on the left. So something on the right must be. First one on the right. Second one on the right. Third on the right, all jiggly. I guess I gotta find this fourth one. It's gonna be quite difficult to find. Hmm. So at this point, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll turn the tension up pretty high, and this will for sure, um, the, the binder won't jiggle. So that first one, I can hear that. It sounds like it's jiggling. Second, uh, second one on the left, no. Third one on the left, no. Fourth one on the left, no. Oh, that's the fifth one on the left, sorry. Fourth one on the left, jiggling. Something on the right. Second one on the right, no. Third one. Sorry, first one on the right, second one on the right. I'm not sure about the second one on the right. Let me try to listen carefully and hear over that 3D printer. All right, all the, the first three on the right are uh, seem to be jiggling. So I gotta find this fourth one on the right. It must be something to do with the fourth one on the right. There we go, we'll click from the fourth one on the right. Um, check the ones in front just for thoroughness. Yep, they're all jiggling. Check the left. All right, the last one on the left is now binding. So I'll let off a lot of my tension. Just try to work it into the gate or out of whatever false gate, if you want to call it, that it's in. And we're open. <coughs> All right. So now that that's open, you can see there. Let's go ahead and lock it back up again. And um, this one is actually kind of cool. If you're getting into U9s, um, just starting, I don't know if they're very easy to find or not because uh, I only have a few of these. Um, and they're these smooth wafer type ones. Um, what's cool is that you can mix around the wafers all you want uh, because you can gut it without a key. Whereas the other ones, have a little bar that, that would stop you from doing that. And I'll show all that in a minute. Once I get this open. All right, let's bring a tray. Um, so there's the uh, lock core, the other stuff. You don't, you don't need all this stuff to pick it. You only need this part really if you wanna do your picking. I like to have it fully assembled when I do it. There's a C-clip here to take off and um, the other ones have like screws on the back. Oops, that like that. They have screws on the back. This one has like a bar all the way across. So if you have a bar all the way across, it's probably a smooth wafer one. Got a ring there and that. Can move this one out the way for a second. All right. Usually at this point you need a key because these uh, the U9s, the most of them have this bar across the top. You could knock that bar out. It's only pressure fit in there, and then you could gut it. So if you didn't have a key. But in this case, you don't need a key at all because there's no, no bar in the middle. So there's our, um, there's our plug, and we'll take that off. There's two springs that go with it, one, two. 
and then we'll take a look at these wafers. Um, you know, always cool thing is when you put the the U9 key in, you can watch the wafers bounce back and forth like that, and all line up so that that sidebar can drop down. All right, enough of that. I'll move this up a little so we can put this here, and we'll pull these edge pieces off like that, um, and then we'll start taking it apart. Uh, we'll do it with tweezers. I like to grab the little spring part, pull it off. So there's uh, a, a wafer or a lever, and then a spacer, another wafer or a level and lever, come on, and a spacer. Repeat nine times, U9, nine, nine wafers usually. Keep going. Now I got a double wafer, and this is how they create the the hole to hold the um, the spring. They got half a hole in each of the wafers, so you got to put these in the right way up, otherwise the hole won't form to hold the spring. Try not to mix up the order because uh, it can be a pain to to figure out again. Not like a pin tumbler where you just drop the. Oh, I, so these rods, they're they're just loose in here. Um, so they can come off easily and uh, you can just remove all your wafers like that. You'll notice that they stayed in most of the time. I dropped a tiny bit of super glue at the bottom of them because uh, they don't need to come out and it just makes things a little bit more of a pain to assemble and disassemble if these rods keep falling out on you. Especially if you want to do anything like progressive pinning, um, you don't want them to keep falling out on you. Come on. This one has its uh, spring stuck into the the side there. There we go. Okay, so now that all those are out, this is pretty standard. Um, like I said, I had this a little tiny drop of super glue to hold that down there. And with those both rods, you can just put it together easily. So looking at these, um, we're, what we're going to do is I have another one here that I had disassembled. And we're going to compare some of these um, wafers. Um, one thing is that I noticed when they're in here, when you go to pick one, um, the, where is it? Okay, so the, this one, it'll rotate that way to, to get set. And it'll sit on like a, the, the sidebar will sit on like the sloped area and you kind of have to counter rotate to get up that slope and then you can continue. Uh, it's kind of like, um, yeah, counter rotation is necessary. And then you drop into, I mean, it doesn't really look like there's a false cape, but there is a thing that you get stuck in right here. It, it drops down, and you have to kind of counter rotate to get across that far, that flat part and drop into it. You can't just like push it. Uh, it does require a slight bit of counter rotation to drop it down. I think because this is flat, so when you're thinking rotationally, a flat surface is going to ride up, right? Because um, it's not, if it was curved, you could ride around that curved surface as it turns, but since it's flat, right, as it turns, it's actually a slope, right? So I'm wondering if these uh, wafers have the same shape as these ones that have these um, deeper false gates. So the newer models have these kind of uh, these much deeper false gates on them. They have a they look like a, a pinch right there. And if you look from above, you can tell the difference because the true gate is open like that, whereas the false gate looks like it has a little piece of metal in the middle because it has that little pinch, right? Um, these don't have false gates of that nature. Um, the, I guess the older one, the, what we call the smooth. And they also don't have the serrations. You'll see this, this has serrations on it. The newer ones all have these serrations. Um, but I want to see if the shape is the same. So it looks pretty similar, right? It's pretty similar. Um, let's see if I have another one to compare it to. Yeah, it looks pretty similar to all of them. So I don't think they really change much with the shape at all. Uh, but let's take a look at all these. Um, we also I also mentioned that um, I felt uh, the wide gate 
For example, like this, there's that wide gate, and that has a lot of jiggle, right, when you set it to the right gate. Some of these have um, two gates in them, two, two gates, so you can set to either one. In each case, I was only setting it to the first true gate. I never went to the second true gate in any of them because um, I was very careful to only push it past that first nub and not jump to the next gate. So that is the uh, smooth wafer version of the Miwa U9 and another version, uh, another kind of format to uh, to gut. And like I said, this is a nice one because um, you can gut it without the key. Thanks, everyone. Bye.